this week's letter, X. X is for xanthan gum. Xanthan gum has become a popular modernist thickener. In fact, you can find it in many supermarkets because of substance. It's made through microbial fermentation, very similar to how brewer's yeast is made with beer. If you've ever had fermented vinegars, fermented sourdough, yum. The way xanthan is made is very uh, similar to those. So they take xanthomonas capistris, which is a bacteria, and ferment it with sugars, so carbs. A lot of people who do gluten-free baking use xanthan gum as a thickener to do something that the protein gluten is normally in charge of doing. You might not be familiar with it. It's not really that weird of a man-made. So I actually have some here and you can see it's like a powder substance. Oh, lovely on my laptop. But the difference between this particular fermentation process and fermented sourdough is because it's a commercial product, they tend to they tend to purify it, uh, dry it, then grate it. So you really get this powdery substance. It's like a white powder. It makes it unfamiliar to us, so it's a little bit off-putting, but it definitely is not unnatural. A little goes a long, way, a long way. Essentially, you most recipes for like a loaf of bread would call for like one teaspoon or even half a teaspoon. So aside from baked goods items, xanthan gum can also be found in anything from toothpaste, chewing gum, cosmetics, uh, ice cream, even like toilet bowl cleaner. So I know a lot of us have been trained to, when you read the back of a label, if you don't recognize one of the ingredients, it's like red flags, red flags. Xanthan gum is not necessarily bad for you. Again, it is all natural and it's in so many different products because it is an emulsifier. An emulsifier you can think of as something that just binds things together. Almost like a pair of Spanx, it really just like sucks everything in and basically allows it to keep its shape. So if you think of like barbecue sauce, that's why it's so thick. If you basically, if we didn't have xanthan gum in gluten-free baked goods, we would le be left with a pile of crumbs, which would be so sad. So as noted, xanthan gum is used as a thickener or an emulsifier, and it, on, it is usually used as noted in gluten-free recipes, but it's allergy-free in general. So it's egg-free, nut-free, vegan. Other types of thickeners that are not allergy-free are egg yolks, uh, Greek yogurt, cornstarch. So sometimes those are not used because egg, egg yolks are not vegan. Greek yogurt is not vegan either. It also contains lactose and milk. And cornstarch can also, is also known to spike, spike your blood sugar. So it's high in calories and carbohydrates, which sometimes if you're trying to make either keto or whatever the case, uh, low calorie baked good, then xanthan gum is a great swap for any of those allergy one fun fact about xanthan gum is that it's been used in medical scenarios where it is often used in the casing of sustained release pills because it does allow the pill container to keep its shape and allows the contents of whatever is in said pill to, instead of like a rapid release where the blood absorbs it immediately, it allows the blood to slowly digest the content of the pill.